praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on and praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. I'm so glad he's my rock and my fortress and my shelter in time of storm that I can run to. And I'm so thankful that I can call him Lord. And I want to welcome each one of you here tonight. It's a beautiful crowd, a little smaller than normal, but that's okay. <laughs> the 7 o'clock, I, I, maybe they forgot about the time change. They'll be here at 7.30. Maybe they'll start trickling in then. But let's go ahead and welcome the Lord in to his house and just praise him. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. And we just come tonight to give you praise and glory and honor. And we just come to worship you and just come to magnify your name and come to ask you to have your way and to move amongst us and to lead and guide us. And Lord, let us hear from you, Lord. Let us sense your presence and let us feel your presence, God, because you are the one who can change lives. You're the life changer. You're the way maker, the peace giver, Lord. And we just ask that you move. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in worship. Worthy of the praises, worthy of the praises, name of one man. Worthy of the praise, worthy of the praises, worthy of the praises, in name of one man. Worthy of the praise. Worthy of 
worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. The same man that walked on water and caused the blind to see. Amen. And made the lame to walk. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And tonight he turned the water into water. Went all around that he 
dream of the two. Thine all and 
paid it all Oh, you hear my own Sin has left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Jesus paid it all Oh, you hear my own Sin has left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Sing it for Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He was divided. Well, let's sing it one more time. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in His presence. Truly, tonight I am thankful Jesus paid it all. Amen. Amen. Where would we be without the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Tell him you made it to a Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. Amen. And uh, we're delighted that you are here. And uh, 
Uh, I will tell you, I, I had the nervous jitters a little earlier today, thinking, now, Lord, if nobody remembers, it's going to be quiet at 7 o'clock there. We're starting at 7, and uh, I'm glad that you remembered some. I, we're pulling in literally as I was walking across at 7, and so I know it's a transition thing here for some folks, uh, but it'll be okay. We'll get there. Amen? And um, so if somebody walks in at 7.30, don't look at them mean. Love them in Jesus' name. Amen? We could all plan to do that. When they walk in, I could say, um, you know, look or something, and everybody just stare at them. But that wouldn't be fair, and um, that wouldn't be fair to them at all. You know, they might have just forgot. But we're glad that you're here and trust that you've had a great week in the Lord. My, didn't we have church around this place Sunday? Amen? I don't know what Sunday morning was like. Um, I wasn't here. Missed some of you, but Sunday night I was back and had a great time at Zellwood Sunday as we went over and, and preached and had dinner with them and celebrated 89 years of ministry. What a joy it was to be there. They could have invited anybody in the world, but they asked me to come, and I had a good time. I had good singing and had good a, a, a good message, I guess. That's what they said, and good video and good food and good fellowship. And then I had a good day on Sunday, went over to Spirit Life and had a service there a Sunday afternoon and then back here Sunday night. And our Brother Carl's just a nut. You know that. You can tell him I said that. And uh, I would tell him that if he was here. But uh, he said he was sandwiched in between uh, worship and prayer. And if you were with us Sunday night, y'all finally went home about 9 o'clock. Amen. Y'all wouldn't go home early. And uh, we had about an hour of singing in preliminaries. And I thought for a moment there he wasn't going to preach. And um, But he did. He preached about an hour. Got all 11 points out minus one. He did skip one, if you were counting. And then uh, we prayed for the others for an hour. So it was a great day in the Lord. And then Monday we went over to Spirit Life and had a great, saw some of you there Monday night. And some of you were back there last night. I wasn't there last night. I knew many of you were going to be there. I thought somebody better come to prayer meeting. Hey, Amen. We'll pray while y'all y'all have church. So that's what I was doing at 7 o'clock last night, praying for you guys over there. And then tonight, some are there tonight, and we're so thankful for that. If you get a chance tomorrow night, go out and be with them tomorrow night. We'll be the last night uh, as it is scheduled. On Thursday night is their regular night service, so they'll go Monday through Thursday. So if you want to get over there, get over there um, tomorrow night, I believe. Um, see, Karen and them have been there. I think James and them have been over there. And, uh, and I think Allie went over there, and I saw some more of you over there. So uh, just delighted that you were there, and uh, I trust that Brother Keith, I heard, was there. Sister Sonia, I heard, was there. Pastor, did you make it over there last night? Okay, I knew you were supposed to go. Brother Roger, did you all make it over there? Not Okay, I didn't know. I saw your head thought maybe you made it too. So he's just amen all the other folks that went over there. And uh, so uh, I don't know if I'll make it tomorrow night or not. Tomorrow is a very special day in our family. And my baby turns eight years old tomorrow. And she's been waiting for a whole year to turn eight years old. And, and um, I guess I upset her a few weeks ago. You know how mamas are. They're like, you can't say that. Uh, I noticed the other day that she had teared up about something. I didn't put two and two together. You know how us men are. And later I found out I had been joking and said, we're going to cancel your birthday. We're not going to have it. And uh, you're not growing up. You're not turning eight. I don't like it. You know all those things you say. Well, I guess she took Daddy seriously. When I'm glad she did. I mean, I hope she takes Dad seriously most of the time. But I guess it upset her. And she was all emotional about it and said, Dad's canceling my birthday. I guess she thought I had the authority and the power to do that. Man, I want her to be my daughter forever. And uh, I don't have that power or that authority, but she, I guess, thought I did. And she said, you can't say that. You upset her. So we're not canceling it. We're having a birthday tomorrow. Amen. And so uh, we've, uh, she has violin tomorrow. We've moved that to another day. To, uh, we're going to spend some time with her tomorrow after school, hopefully. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. So um, I don't know if I'll be there or not. If I'm not, you just shout for me. And uh, Pastor can't be everywhere at the same time. And tomorrow night, or tomorrow day, tomorrow is Mariah's birthday. And uh, I'm going to take time and be with her tomorrow afternoon. And if we get there, we get there. And if we don't, well, uh, don't feel bad at me. Amen. I was there Monday night, so I've got my extra service in this week. And uh, I told her, I said, you don't turn 8 until 11.15 tomorrow. She says, no, sir. When I wake up in the morning, I'm 8 years old. So she's taking every hour she can. So we're going to live it big tomorrow. We might run and get ice cream after it's all done, and you never know. So uh, just remember her. So thankful for my children what God's doing. Amen. By way of announcements, let me remind you that this coming Saturday, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock is prayer time, and we need to be in church, and we need to pray. So I hope that you'll make a special effort to be here 6 and to 7 on Saturday night for a solemn assembly prayer time. And then Sunday is church. We're going to have uh, Sunday school, morning worship, uh, evening worship, 
And there's no choir practice this Sunday because there's journey fellowship after that off campus. So uh, find a way to get plugged in. And we're literally weeks away from Thanksgiving. I hope you know that. We are literally about three weeks from tomorrow away from Thanksgiving. And we're only about seven weeks or so, uh, 49, 48, 47 days away from Christmas. So uh, I hope you got all your Christmas shopping done. And uh, hopefully all seven of your trees are up and things like that. Uh, Cherith and I have solved the world's issue. She's so much like her father. Uh, we've decided the best thing to do is go to Walmart, the place I don't like to go, and get one of those two-foot miniature pre-decorated Christmas trees in the box, put it up on Christmas the 23rd that night late, take it down Christmas night, have it up for 48 hours, and be done. That's, but that's not, it's not about the tree and the presents anyhow. She's so much like her father that that is so scary because she'll hopefully be a mom one day and uh, hopefully she won't teach her kids to do it that way. Uh, Sister Wendy keeps us balanced in our home. She's like, no. Now, last year, Pastor did the best he ever done. He put up the Christmas tree the Thursday of Thanksgiving. That night, we went out, bought our tree, put it up. It didn't get decorated for three or four weeks, it seemed like. But it was up that night with the lights on it, if I remember right. And we put it up Thursday night, lights on it Friday, and we had a lighted, a, a lighted Christmas tree. Is that the right grammar there? Uh, a lit Christmas tree. A tree that had Christmas lights on it um, way before December ever got here. So you never know what might happen this year. Amen. All right, junior place team, junior ushers, usherettes, come. And uh, I'm still not uh, adjusted. The first night, time changed this week. It gets dark at, you know, 6 o'clock or 530 and then we have service change, so I, I just I'm all out of whack. So you pray for me tonight. I'll be all right in the end. Hallelujah. They'll figure it all out here in just a moment. Amen. Got some new guys looks like up on the forum platform tonight or on the altar area. Good. All right, give us given to the Lord tonight. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the joy it is just to be a Christian, to be a part of the family of God. Lord, I don't know what I would do without Jesus. People try to live without Him every day. Lord, I don't even want to try to live a moment without Him. Lord, I need Him in my life. I pray, for you, pray that you'll bless this offering, bless the tithes, bless the, the, the love gifts, multiply it to meet the needs of our church. We'll forever be thankful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. And amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Good on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from a better cup, when the devil comes and knocking, show me an easier way. I stand right where on my feet I throw my head in the air. I look him straight in the eye. I say my foot's on the rock and my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from a bear cup, when the devil comes a knocking, show me an easier way. Feet. I throw my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock, and my mind made up, I've got my foot on the rock, and my mind made up, though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from a better cup, when the devil comes to knock in, show me an easier way. I throw my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I take my foot on the rock, and my mind made up. Hallelujah. You got your foot on the rock tonight, amen. Amen. Do want to dismiss all of our students to classes at this time. We are on schedule. Hallelujah. 7.30 and we're dismissing. Uh, you pray for us. We're going to try our best to follow that. And uh, we're going to try to follow our, our best to follow my commitment that at about 8.30 we're going to dismiss church. Now, if it happens to be 9 o'clock, just pray for us. Amen. We're not intending to do that. But um, this is a big transition for our church. And I appreciate you being flexible with us tonight. Good, A good number of adults left in the main building. After church, after kids are dismissed tonight. 
Let's go, Lord, in prayer tonight. There are some needs that I want to share with you. Um, continue to remember Brother Maynard. It was so good to see him in church Sunday night and then Monday, Brother Carl and Brother Leroy. Brother Leroy played chauffeur some Monday morning. They went over and checked on him again, and he was still having a pretty good day. So continue to remember Brother Maynard. Do ask that you remember Sister Belinda Gray. Some of you may have heard that she is at Health Central and uh, needs a touch of God in her life. The, the details there, um, she, she's got a lot to work through, so remember Sister Belinda. Um, some of you know uh, Randy um, Cardwell. Uh, we did get the message they moved him out of the hospital back to rehab. And so uh, it seems that he's in rehab, back at the hospital, in rehab, back at the hospital, which is not a good setting. Um, but we did get the call today that he's back at the rehab. So I ask that you just remember him and his family, uh, that God will strengthen him and, and lead him. And uh, God knows the details there. And also Sister Hardin, uh, that God will strengthen them as well. It is good to see Brother Summerall in church tonight. But remember him and Sister Debbie, both of them need a touch in their body. God knows the details there. I do ask that you remember um, a pastor, uh, one of our regional bishops, um, Stevie Griffin, pastor of the Arcadia Church. He's home, but early Sunday morning, this past Sunday was homecoming for them. And uh, early Sunday morning before service, uh, they were out cooking on the grill, getting things ready, the meat ready. He was bitten twice by a black widow spider and spent several hours, a day or so, maybe two days in ICU. And uh, he is now out and at home, but uh, still a little ways to go there. So I ask that you remember uh, that church and that region, uh, that God will strengthen them. And then I mentioned, I think it was last week, about um, my mom's church, her pastor passing away. We were notified on Monday another pastor from the South Florida area, uh, active pastor, passed away on Monday. Um, so his church again, the pastor is there one service and not the next. Uh, God called him home, and they're having his services to, um, Saturday. Um, at the Cooper City Church, and he wasn't from Cooper City. They're just using that facility. It's large enough to handle the crowd there. So remember our state officials as they're making decisions on what to do in those kind of situations, and um, and remember those congregations. It's just things that I hear uh, being on the region team, and I, I just think we can pray for that. It'll be okay to pray. We might not know them, but God knows them, and let's pray for those two churches and ask God to strengthen them. Any spoken requests on this side tonight? Sister Joyce. Yes. 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 Right. Back and forth. Yes. Let's remember Brother Don. Amen. His surgery next week. Any more on this side? Brother Wilmer Jean? Remember Sister Donna today. Yes. Yes. Let's remember these requests. God's able to touch every last one of them. I believe that. Amen. Brother Wilmer Jean had a grandson turn 18 this week as well. So we remember I ran into Dustin, uh, I think it was, Sunday night. So he said, I'm turning 18 Tuesday, Pastor. So remember Dustin as well. Any more on this side tonight? Let's remember Sister Carolyn tonight. Yes, yes. All right. Any on this side tonight? Sister Melinda? Let's remember Leland. That would be Brother Clifton's brother. Some of you will make the connection that way if I'm correct. So let's remember Leland Johnson, right? Let's remember him. Sister Maureen? Yes. Strength? Yes. Sister Linda? Yes, Sister Linda's family. Sister Mary. Let's remember Hannah. Bless her heart. Let's remember Hannah tonight. Yes, Brother Eric. Brother Eric and his family. Yes, yes. Any more tonight? Sister Tanya. Sister Tanya and her family. Yes, yes. All right. I believe God's able. Amen. Remember Sister Edna tonight as well, as we missed her Sunday night. But, uh, she was in church Monday night and Tuesday night. She's here tonight. Let's remember Sister Edna. God will just strengthen her. She, God knows the need there. Any more that I've missed? Any more? All right, unspoken. Let me signify by the lifting of your hands. God knows the details. I remember our mamas to be. Amen. Sister Jade at Violin had her baby. And um, Gina's going to have hers at the end of the month. And Melinda's coming around the corner in February. And 
Kelly's coming around the corner at the end of January, and I'm ready to have some more babies. Amen. So um, they're probably about ready to deliver as well. So let's remember these moms. Good, healthy babies is our prayer, and that God will strengthen them and be with them. Amen. Stand with me, if you will, for the reading, for the reading, for the prayer. I didn't preach Sunday night, so I guess I'm ready to preach. You better, you better watch out. Amen. We're going to pray. We're not going to preach. We're going to pray. Amen. And then we might think about preaching. Hallelujah. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in church on a Wednesday night. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of God that never, ever, ever loses, Lord, its ability to do what needs to be done. Father, I bring these requests before you tonight. Lord, I ask that you'll lead and guide and direct, Lord, the very depths of, of all of these requests tonight. Father, I bring, Lord, the pastor of the church and, Lord, Arcadia, Pastor Griffin, above you tonight. Lord, just minister to his body and to his family and to his church. And, Lord, I pray for the church church, Lord, this week that lost their pastor. Pray that your Lord just strengthen them and guide them, Lord, through the process. And let them, Lord, realize, God, that your plan is always for the best. And Lord, I pray tonight for the request. And Lord, for Brother Maynard and Sister Harden, Lord, and Sister Sasser and Brother Clifton. Lord, just continue to move in their life. Touch Brother Summerall and Sister Summerall, God. Touch Brother Don. Touch Sister Donna tonight. Lord, just move in their bodies. And Lord, I know that you're able, Lord, Lord, be with Brother Rex and help him tonight. Let him, Lord, just know that you're with him. Touch Sister Edna, Lord, and Lord, just be with her, Lord, and strengthen her, Lord. You know the need in her life. And Lord, I pray tonight that you'll touch Leland Johnson. Help him tonight. Lord, just let the infection go away in his body. Lord, be with Carolyn tonight. God, Lord, just give her peace in her heart. Lord, let her, God, just know that you're with her, Lord. Give those that are in her care, Lord, that's caring for her, Lord, the insight on what to say and what to do, Lord, be with Hannah tonight. Lord, if she's had those wisdom teeth cut out, I know that you're able, Lord, to heal her and strengthen her, Lord. And give Sister Maureen strength, Lord. Touch the families, Lord, that were represented tonight, Lord. Sister Tanya's family and Brother Eric's family, Lord. And Sister Linda's family, God, just touch them tonight, I pray. And Lord, I pray that you'll be with Kelly and be with Melinda and be with Gina, Lord. And strengthen them, God. And we just pray for great deliveries and healthy babies, God. Help them tonight, Lord, to give you all the praise and all the honor for it. Help us tonight, Lord, to be led by who you are. Father, I pray that you'll touch my life tonight. Strengthen us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to do that that's before us. Give us strength for the task. And help us, Lord, to know which way to go. Help us to know the answer, Lord. And help us, Lord, to be led by your spirit and by your power. Lord, I pray you'll move in our classes tonight touch our students and touch our girls clubs and boys clubs and be with them God and Lord be with our little group tonight God let them love Jesus I pray and Lord just move on the depths of every request and Lord don't pass me by tonight but hear my cry Lord don't pass me by tonight but stop by this place and stop by our needs tonight stop by this house and Lord and let us know that you're with us tonight and Lord let us have a made up mind that no matter what happens Lord Lord, I'm going to love you with every being in my body. Lord, I'm going to love you with every else that I can. Lord, I'm going to say, not my will, but thine be done. Help us, God, to find your will. Help us, Lord, to be led by your Spirit. Lord, it will forever give you praise and honor and glory for it all. Lord, and for every unspoken request tonight, move on the depths of it, Lord, and we'll forever be thankful. In the name of Jesus, we pray tonight. And the church said amen and amen you may be seated in his presence tonight amen again do remember spirit life as you're praying ask God to be with them and um, they've got a couple of events coming up that I want God to just bless them with and help them and also uh, if you get a chance tomorrow night go out and be a part of that I trust that they'll have a good service tomorrow night. Amen. Pastor Tim's coming tonight. Uh, he was on standby. We had a crazy weekend, and uh, Brother Renfro was scheduled to preach Sunday morning for me here because uh, I had scheduled to be away, but he also was on standby uh, for Pastor Matthew at Violin Road. And um, Pastor Matthew, not knowing you know how babies are, not knowing when babies are going to come, and he's like, Pastor, if something happens and I can't be there that Sunday morning because we knew the due date was close, um, I'd like to put Pastor Renfro on standby. And would that be okay? I said, Pastor Renfro's a grown man. Do whatever you want to do. So uh, he agreed. And so, but that didn't happen. Pastor Renfro was here Sunday morning, did preach there Sunday night. 
And uh, I trust y'all had church. We had church here. I hope y'all had church there. Um, but uh, Pastor, I went to Pastor Tim. I said, now look, I'm gone Sunday morning. Pastor Renfro is going to preach. But if you get a call at the last minute to be ready to preach, you need to be ready to preach. And I said, because that's the way it works sometimes. But that didn't happen until I called him yesterday. And I said, won't you preach Wednesday night? If we're proud of them, proud of what God's doing in their life. And, and uh, it's been a process. It's still a process. Um, but it's a process that I wouldn't trade anything in the world for. Amen. I know when, Knowing that God's called you, knowing that God's moving in your life, the enemy doesn't like it. But when he gets to stirring around a little bit, makes me just pray a little more, makes you seek a little bit more, makes you get involved a little bit more, and you know that God's called you. Would you welcome Pastor Tim to this pulpit tonight? Come on, Derek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Amen. Why don't we just take a moment to love on Jesus for a minute. Just let him know how much you love him. Because that's what it's all about right there is loving on Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. And we glorify you for who you are, Lord. We just want to take a moment just to tell you that we love you and we thank you for what you do for us. We thank you for dying for us on that cross, Lord. We thank you for sending your Son so that we could have a way, so we didn't have to live the same life that we've always lived, that we could be made free and whole and set free. And we thank you for that. We give you the glory and honor for who you are. We worship you, God. We magnify your name. We just want to worship you. We just want to tell you how much we love you. We just want to just say that you are the one that is all that we need, all that we ever desire, all that we want to be with is to be with you, Lord. And we thank you. We praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, this week, I decided to do something a little different in our household. As Pastor says, sometimes Satan gets to working a little bit in the house and begins to try to disrupt things. And, and that's what's been going on a little bit in our house is he's been trying to disrupt and try to cause a little chaos. So Monday morning I come in from work. I said, you know what? I've heard that if you put on a little praise music, it'll change the atmosphere. So that's what I did. I come in, I put on a little Clint Brown. I begin to listen to a little bit of Clint Brown. And I begin to sit there, and all of a sudden I could feel the atmosphere just change a little bit around me. Then my kids come home, I told them, I said, you know what? We're going to have praise music in this house all the time, 24-7, from here on out, because we're not going to give Satan an opportunity to come in and disrupt and change things. Because I didn't come this far to look back. And I'm not giving my children up to him either. He can fight. He can do what he wants. But I'm not letting him take an inch. I'm not letting him take a mile. I'm taking back what he took from me. And I'm not giving him up anymore. I'm sick and tired of him running over everybody and doing what he wants to do. It's time that we take a stand and begin to do what we should do as Christians. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of letting Satan have his way with, with our people. We are called to be watchmen. We are called to watch over our people. And that's my job as a father, is to watch over my children. It's my job to make sure that they are being taught the way of the Lord. And it's my job to keep them uplifted in prayer. It's my job to be there when they need me. It's my job to cover them, to be there covering. And if I'm not doing that, then I need to go back and I need to find an altar again. Because it is time we take our children back. Because I believe that's one thing that's wrong with our generation today, is we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And I... And, and I'm not, and like I said, I'm not giving my children up. I'm not giving me up. I'm not giving my wife up. He can, he can do what he wants, but I'm not letting him take it. And it's time we begin to fight. It's not my fight. He's already won the battle. All i got to do is stand on his word and know. If he said it, I can claim it. And we know he defeated him, so I don't have to worry about him. He's defeated. Now, if you will, turn in your Bible with me to Joshua 24. We're going to go to a familiar passage. You all could probably quote it. We're going to look at verses 14 and 15. 
Say amen when you got it. If you would please stand for the reading of His Word. Starting with verse 14. It says, Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods in which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, as for me and my house, come on, say it with me, as far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. We praise you, Lord. And I pray that you will hide me behind your cross. Give me the anointing that makes preaching easy. Let me recall those things that you laid on my heart. And let me give that that you've given me, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, as I stated earlier, Satan's out there trying to take all he can. He's out there trying to take. He's out there trying to disrupt. We know he said in the last days that he was going to try to cause us to walk away. Cause us to turn back away from him, from God. But it takes us to make up our mind. We've got to have a made up mind. We've got, mind, got to have a mind that says, I'm not going back. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going back to what I used to be, but I'm going to move forward to the prize of the high calling. And you know, I look back at what I used to be, and I look back and I... <laughs> and, I and I can't believe what, how, how I used to be. But you know what? I'm so glad for what he's done for me and where he brought me from. But you know what? I wouldn't want to go back to what I used to be. Because once I've experienced what God has given me, why would you want to go back to what you used to be when you've already experienced the very best that can be given to you? And if I was to title this sermon, I would simply title, I ain't going back. Did you hear what I said? I'm not going back. We know by looking at the Scripture that we know the children of Israel, they made the oath with Joshua here. They said, yes, that sounds good to us. We'll go with you. But we know that they struggled throughout the history of fighting and, and not fighting, but longing to go back to serve those other gods that was told not to. And I don't see how they could de determine to do that when they already knew that they had a God that brought them across the Red Sea, a God that brought them out of Egypt, a God that had set everything they needed, took care of every need they had. And why would you want to go to an idol, something that can't do anything, an idol that can't move, an idol who can't speak to you, an idol who can't even talk to you when you're hurting, an idol who can't, you can't go to and say, I need you to touch me because he can't touch you. But yet they kept wanting to go back to that. I don't understand. But I've determined that, like I said, I'm not doing that no more. I'm not going to struggle. Because I know Satan don't have anything new. He don't have any new tricks up his sleeve. Only thing he's got is deceit and lie. That's all he can do. He can't do anything other than that. So I don't need to be worried about him. I don't need to be afraid of him because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I don't need to be fearful. I don't need to be afraid. Because I know in who am I serve. But you, though, I know it's one thing in this. The first thing he said, Joshua, was said, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He didn't say as far as being Israel, we're going to serve the Lord. He said as far as me and my house. So that tells me that my first responsibility is to my house. 
to my family to make sure that they serve the Lord. That lets me know that my responsibility is to be the leader of my house. My responsibility is to set the example of how they should live, what they should do, that they should spend time in prayer, that they should have a family altar, that we should do those things that will draw them into wanting to serve Jesus. And I'm not doing that, that I'm a disgrace. I'm letting, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say that, but yeah, I am a disgrace if I'm not doing that to my children. If I'm not living that, if I'm not showing them how to live, if I'm not giving them something different than what they already see, then I am being a, a letdown to them. But it's my responsibility to live it. And man, I want to talk to you guys for a minute because I'm a man and you guys are men too. But it's men, it's time that we rise up and we take our place as being the head of our household. It's time that we rise up and take a stand and say, Look, I'm sick and tired of the way things are. I'm sick and tired of the way things are going, have been, and they're not going to be that way no more. We men need to set the example. We wonder why our children, our young people, are in such shape they are. Because we men are not setting the example. We men are not showing them how they should live their lives. We are not giving them any example of what is going on, how they should live, how they should con conduct themselves. Only thing they're finding out how to act is on the street from the drug dealer. That's the only thing they're seeing is how to live by what they see in the street. And we wonder why our young people are in the shape they're in. Our young people deserve better than that. And men, it's time that we rise up and say that I'm not going back. I'm not letting my church go back. I'm not letting my family go back. I'm not letting my friends go back. I'm going to take everybody I can with me to heaven. And if you don't want to go, I'm going to try to make you go anyway. I'm going to take that two by four out and see if I can't beat it into you. No, I'm kidding. Maybe we need to do that to some people. I know my dad probably thought he needed to do that to me when I was growing up. But you know, that's, like I said, that's what's wrong. We need to be committed. Men, we're not committed anymore. We're just happy to come in, go to our job, and do what put our time in. And then when we get home, our, child, our son may want to come and say, Daddy, can you go out and play ball with me? No, I'm too tired. No, I, I, I can't do that right now. I've got to go do this. Well, when do you have time to spend with your children? That's the most precious thing there is when that child comes to you and say, Daddy, I just want to get up in your lap and love on you for a minute. Daddy, I just want to get up there and just tell you how much I love you. But we're so busy pushing them away, saying we, we, we don't have time. And what's that telling them? Our Heavenly Father's not that way. Our Heavenly Father's not that way. Could you imagine if He was when we were hurting and we were, and we were in need and we called out to Him and he, he wouldn't answer? Could you imagine that? Oh God, I need you! And all of a sudden you don't hear nothing. Or you may hear him say in an audible voice, that's okay, call me back tomorrow. I've I, I got to take care of this over here today. You're not on my list for today. You're on my list for next week. I'm so glad that my God's an on-time God. and that When I call out to him, he's there and he's ready to move. I don't have to wait. I don't have to beg. I don't have to plead. All i got to do is say, Father, I need you. And he's there. And you know, and and I'm going to go ahead and do something. I'm a father. And I have not always been the best father. Can I be honest? I'm going to just be for real. I've not always been the best father. A 
But I'm going to do something. Baby, I owe you an apology for not being there and being that father that I needed to be when you needed me in those times. And if Austin was here, I'd be telling him the same thing. Because we need to be there for them. We need to love them. We need to show them that they love just like God loves us. But we see that, as I said, Joshua realized that his first priority was to his family. He realized that he had to be a leader to his family. He had to set the example. You know, being a leader may not be the most popular thing there is. Your friends may think that because you're you're, you're doing these little strange things, you don't go out and party, you don't go out and drink, you don't go out and do all this other stuff, you're not golfing every week and you're not fishing every week, there's something wrong with you. We should be setting the norm, not them. We should make it exciting to come to the house of God. We should make it a time to where you look forward to coming in and spending time with the one who died for you. You know, we should almost come in dancing to be excited to come into God's house. Come in dancing when we come in. But instead, we come... Oh, dragging in. Oh, when the saints come dragging in. Here we come. I know my God can do anything, but right now, I, I don't feel it right now, but He can do it. And it may not be popular, as I said, being the one that stands up and says that's not right. It may not be popular to stand up against your crowd against your friends when they're telling you or trying to tell you how, that you shouldn't be doing this and you should do that. And you have to take a stand. Or when you have to go into the school and tell the school that you don't like what they're doing and teaching your children. We need to do that. To let them know that we're not happy with what they're teaching our children. We need to let them know. Because if we don't, who will? It's not popular being that spiritual leader all the time. But we need to be. God's called us to be. But I think back. We talked about Peter Sunday night, and I'm going to touch on him a little bit tonight too. Just a little bit. Pastor Carl said that, you know, Peter was one just to speak without thinking. And he touched on it Sunday night about how he thought didn't think very well before he said that that I would never leave you. I won't deny you, Christ. I won't deny you. No, I won't. I love you too much. I've never denied you. You did too much to me. I've walked with you and I've heard you teach. And I know I won't do that. But what happened? What happened? But you know the most amazing thing to me, after Jesus had already rose rose from the grave, and he's been walking and being seen and doing his thing, He goes and he finds Peter. He goes looking for Peter. And you know where Peter was? He went back to what he was doing before he found Christ. He was fishing. Is there... Are, are, am I saying that he was backslid? I'm not saying he's backslid. I just said he went back to what he was doing before he found Christ. I don't know if he had backslid or not. But he went back to what he was doing before he found Christ, which was fishing. And he had heard the teacher and said that, yes, I will meet you at this very spot when I come back. He had heard. 
Him tell him all along that I will come back. I'm going to die. I have to go. I'm appointed to go to the cross to die. But I will come back. But he went back to what he was doing. As if he really didn't expect him to come back. But Jesus came to find him. And he asked him an amazing question three times. Do you love me? You know, even when we may make mistakes. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> even when we may make mistakes, you know, it's amazing to me that he'll come looking for us. He'll come looking for you. You don't have to go looking for him. He'll come looking for you. It tells us right there that he went looking for Peter. And then he asked him three questions. And I've heard it debated all kinds of ways. Why did he ask him three times? Three times. Why did he ask him three times? Why do you love me? I've heard it debated all kinds of different ways. That oh, they only Peter only loved him like a friend. He didn't really have that true love for, for him. I really don't know why he asked him three times. Well, I think I do. I think he wanted to make sure that he really did turn around. That there was a change in his heart. That he changed his heart and he was not that one who was hot-headed, was not that one who was quick to speak anymore, but he had changed his heart and now he really realized what Jesus had said, that he really loved him, he really died for him, and he really cared for him, and that he was going to be what he said he was going to be. But you know, I am in Romans 8. I think it's Romans 8, 31. I'm trying to stay on time because I promised Pastor I would. I can't see the time, so y'all going to have to help me. Maybe I need glasses. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe. So y'all going to have to let me know when I'm getting close. Romans 8.31, starting there. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Or is it he who condemns? Is it Christ who died? And furthermore is also risen, who is it? who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes interse intercession for us. Now, this is what I want you to get. Who shall separate us? Let me say that again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted asleep for the slaughter. That in all these things we are made more than conquerors through him who loved us. While I'm reading, let me read one more. It kind of goes along with that. If I can remember, I wrote it down. Hopefully I didn't forget where I wrote it. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. I think it ties in well with what we're talking about. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. He's talking to us right there. 
Who? Who can take you out of the hand of Jesus? Brother Renfro, if I'm in his hand, if I'm in Jesus' hands, can you rift, can you pull me out of that grip? Brother Roger, can you take me out of that grip? Daddy, can you pull me out of God's grip? If he loves me that much, can you pull me out of his hand? So why would we want to go back to what we used to be, what we used to do, when we got somebody who loved us so much that he's not going to let anything happen to you, that he was willing to die for you, and he's willing not to let nobody come take you out of his grip? Why do we want to go back? I don't understand why we want to turn back, why we would want to go back, why we would want to say, I've had enough, I can't make it. I'm going to share something with you in a minute, which I shared with Pastor a little bit. I'm going to tell them myself. I'm bad about that, but I'm going to. But I, they say confession is good for a soul, but I'm not ready to get there yet. But so often we let the enemy come. And we let him work on our mind, because the biggest battle is right here is your mind. He comes, first place he's going to come is right here to you, right here in the mind. He's going to begin to plant those little thoughts about... Oh, oh, Brother Carlton, you know you really don't love your wife. You know you're sick and tired of her telling you what to do. You know you're ready to just go ahead and leave. And it starts right there. And you can stop it before it gets anywhere else by resisting it, and he will flee. But so often we begin to buy into it and begin to listen to what he's telling us. And then when he begins to take from an inch to a mile. And before he knows it, he think you've got, he's got you believing that Brother Carter and your wife don't love you. And you might as well leave her. And before you know it, you're thinking about that. Because you gave him an inch. But we forget that God's not going to let him, if we will stand our ground, God's not going to let Satan come do anything to us to hurt us, to harm us, or to do anything. He's not going to let him pull us out of his grip, his love. But we forget. <laughs> but... I'm getting close, so I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping it up. I'm like, Pastor, I, Pastor, I have to finish this up next time, okay? I'm borrowing from Pastor. <laughs> but I told you that I was going to tell on myself. And y'all bear with me because I, I, I'm just going to tell you that I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And this, one's not e this is not an easy one for me. I shared this with Pastor. And Pastor, this is one reason I decided to do what I said, to get in that praise. Last Friday, I was at home. You guys know that I'm working two jobs. At night, of no less. I maybe average four to five hours a night of sleep. I'm not, uh, I'm not asking for your sympathy, but I'm just... And there's times that I just get beat down and, and that... I don't have the energy. And the kids were, you know, they had been kids all week. They've been, you know, you know, just being kids. And I didn't have and I just didn't want to be bothered no more. And Satan began to take advantage of that. And he come in and he almost had me persuaded. And I told Pastor no. He almost had me persuaded to leave my wife and to walk out on my kids because I didn't have that that I needed to be the father that I needed, the husband I needed. He almost had me persuaded. I was already ready to tell Leslie when she come home Friday from work, baby, I've had enough. By this time this weekend, I'll be gone. Not because I don't love you, not because I don't love the kids, but I just can't deal with it no more. But then an amazing thing happened. 
I was laying in the bed, and all of a sudden I began to feel the warmth of like somebody was hugging me. I could feel a sense of the atmosphere change a little bit. And I could feel as if God had come in that very room and wrapped his arms around me and began to say, Son, it's okay. I love you. I went to the cross for you. And I knew one day you would be at this very place that you're at. And this is the whole reason that I went there. It's so that you can know that I am who I say that I am. And they say that you have to be tested to have a testimony. Now I have a testimony and I can tell you that the God that I serve is much bigger than Satan. That I didn't buy into it. I didn't tell Leslie. I'm standing here to tell you that I'm not leaving. I'm standing my ground. I'm making a commitment to my family. And we had a meeting Sunday after church. And I told them that things are going to change. We're not going to do what we've been doing anymore. I'm not backing up. I'm not giving up. I'm not. And I'm here to declare... Satan can come at me with everything he's got, but I'm going to put my feet down and I'm going to stand firm and say, come at me because my elder brother's not going to let you do anything to me because of he's already defeated you. And I can stand firm and say, don't cross that bloodline right there. There's a bloodline right there that you cannot cross. Come on and try. My brother's waiting on you. Come on, cross that line. He's waiting on you. I don't have to fight you. I got an elder brother who's ready and able. And if I'm going through that, I'm sure there's others who are facing and, and to the point where Satan is coming at you because he's out there to try to kill, steal, and destroy. But I'm here to tell you that if you'll plant your feet in the, in the ground firmly and say, God, I need you. I can't do it on my own. I've tried. And if you will just turn and let God have His way in your life, I can guarantee you, you'll see things change. It ain't no longer Tim's way. It ain't no longer Leslie's way. It ain't no longer Austin and Allie's way, but it's God's way. Come on, somebody talk to me now. It's not my way. It's not Pastor Thomas's way. It's not, it's not the church of God's way. It's God's way. And it's time that we get back to God's way, not man's way. It's time we get back to doing what thus saith the Lord. Because we've got too many out there trying to deceive us. That who's supposed to be our shepherds out there. But they're trying to deceive us. And it's time that we take our stand and say, uh-uh, no, no, I'm not buying that. Somebody help me. What time is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm straining about here to see what time it is. But, yes, I think I need to. Somebody please make sure I'm doing that, okay? Can you want somebody set that up for me, please? But I just want to tell you guys that if he would do that for me, and I don't know what you guys face. I don't know what goes on in your lives. I don't know what he's hitting you at. Because if he's hitting against me, if he's fighting me like he's fighting, and he's fighting my family like he's fighting, then he's fighting y'all too. Because I'm nobody special. I'm nobody special. And I wonder, why in the world is he hitting me like he's hitting me? Because I'm nobody. But then I realized that there's something of what's going on in this church. These services that we're having in this church. Satan is angry because he knows that something's about to happen. And he's going to do all he can to disrupt 
to destroy and to make it into a chaos, to divide us. Because he don't want to see what's coming around the corner. When you get in a service like Sunday night where people don't want to leave, that reminds me of the good old-fashioned Pentecost. That tells me that something's about to happen. I think we're fixing to start seeing the blinded eyes open around here. I think we're fixing to see the lame walk. I think we're fixing to see the drunk come in and set free. I think we're getting ready to see the drug addict come in and be set free. Not because of what pastor's doing. Not because of what I'm doing or Brother Renfro. But it's because we're willing to get on our face and seek God and say, God, it's not about us, but it's about you. And I encourage you, don't follow me. Please don't follow me. Because I'll lead you into a ditch sure as I'm living. And I don't want to take you to the ditch. I might not be able to get you out once I got you in there. Don't follow me. Follow Christ. And I'll speak for pastor. Don't follow pastor. Don't follow... I'm not going to call her first lady. Don't follow Sister Wendy. Follow Christ. For he is the one that is our example. He's the one who showed us how to live while he was here. He's the one who lived a sinless life. Not me. So I simply want to ask you, what is your battle? What are you struggling with? What is God, uh, Satan coming at you at with? Is it your finances? Is it? Is he trying to divide, divide the family? Is he trying to cause chaos in the home? Is he trying to take your job away from you? Is he trying to make you feel like you're not loved? Is he trying to tell you that God don't care about you? He don't even know where you're at anymore. He's got all about you. He's not interested in you. Well, I'm here to tell you because I know from what I experienced Friday in my life that God is interested in me. I may not have felt Him. I may not have known He was there uh, for a while, but I can tell you that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that God knows where I'm at. He knows I'm at 1604 Maureen Avenue, but He also knew that I was at Despair Street as well. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. And in closing, Sister Wendy, in closing, I want you to just sit there for a minute and just think about how good God is. I want you to think about what he's done for you. I wanted you to think about the times that he's pulled you out of the fire. I want you to think about the times that when you were ready to give up and you felt like there was no way and you felt like there was nobody there, that he showed up. And I want you to remember those times. I want you to look back and remember and look back and say, I can remember that time when God was there for me and he met me at my very knees. Because tonight, I don't care what it is, what you're facing, what you're going through, I don't know, but I know that if God was coming, I mean, Satan was coming at me like that, he's coming at others that way too. And I'm here to tell you that I'm persuaded. If I've never been persuaded again that there is a God that loves us, that truly loves us, and we don't have to do anything other than simply call out on his name. We don't have to try to be good. We don't have to try to clean ourselves up. All we got to do is say, God, I need you. And he'll show up. And he'll do more than you could ever imagine if you'll give him that opportunity. But we must be willing to surrender.
Brother Eric, what was that song we were talking about this before church? You remember? Not 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 the, the title of this message one. Oh, I got my title of the message from a song that I heard that I've been listening to. It's called, I'm Not Going Back. It's the name of the song. But there's another one. Come on, brother Eric, you're supposed to help me here. Oh, come on, that bothers me. Sister Wendy, you know? Pastor, you know? Somebody help me. Somebody get in my mind here for a minute. We sing it here. It's a beautiful song. It'll come to me later, I'm sure. But anyway, it's about, in a way, about surrendering. Let's go with this one. Sister, when did you know this one? I surrender all. I think that's what you're playing, ain't it? No. You're saying I surrender all. And if you want God to move in your life, oh, oh, I give myself away. But go ahead. But the name of the song was I give myself away so that you can use me. Sometimes we have to give ourselves away. That's the same thing I do when I got married to my wife. I had to give myself to my wife. She had to give herself to me. And in doing that, I had to surrender my will to her will. And she had to surrender her will to my will. It's no longer my will anymore. It's no longer her will. And that's what we have to do with God. We have to say, God... And that's what I want to ask you. Is there anything you can come and give yourself away to Him? And He's here. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I just thank You, Lord, and I praise You. Lord, I thank You for the words that You had me to say. I thank You for the message, Lord. Lord, I thank you for being there and I thank you for showing me that you are who you say you are, that you are the great I am, the great physician, that you are my deliverer, you are the rock that I can run to, that you are my shelter in the time of storm, that you are my fortress. And God, we just praise you. And God, you are a miracle working God and you know what these, you know what these folks are facing. You know what my brothers and sisters are facing. You know what they need. And I know that you're in a miracle work in business. And you can turn things around in a split second. And we'll, we just praise you, Lord. And as I said, whatever you're facing, whatever hardship there is, these altars are open. And I can promise you, God will meet you here if you'll just surrender to Him. I'm not going to wait long, but these altars are open. If you need to pray, I would encourage you to come. We just praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Oh, would you sing it one more time before we leave tonight? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Father, we thank You for Your Word tonight. Thank You for the gentle reminder, God. Lord, the importance of being committed to the Lord. Lord, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you for that tonight, God. Let us be surrendered to you in all that we do. Lord, let us submit ourselves to the calling of God. Lord, let the Spirit of the Lord raise up a standard. God, that when the enemy comes in, let us be reminded the battle is not ours. It's been won on Calvary. Thank you for what you've done for us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More than anything, church, I've got to be committed to the call of Christ. Amen. Focused on who He is. Called. 